Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News for You. I'm Christy Young. I'm Mel Gedroy. I'm David Tennant. And in the news this year, in Westminster, there's joy for Michael Gove as he's finally given a cabinet role that suits his abilities while still challenging him. Would you, would you like a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> At a holiday resort in the Mediterranean, Ed Balls suddenly spots George Osborne. <laughs> In central London, BBC arts editor Will Gompertz struggles with the weight of his massive frontal lobe. <laughs> and in the Midlands, James Dyson's less successful brothers try to get in on the act. <laughs> The British yeah. public have spoken. <laughs> no one knows what they've said. <laughs> the British public don't like um, being told what to think, and they don't like people getting above themselves. So Mrs. May just got a huge slap. Um, <laughs> I'll take half your majority away. Shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> don't you think it's time to, to get rid of the British public? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Now, it was an amazing night for Jeremy Corbyn. Alan, you described him as useless, incompetent, and incapable. Um, <laughs> You're reading I things into that. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah. Jeremy was very pleased. He attempted a high five with uh, oh, Emily. Yes. Should oh. we have a look? Yes, let's yeah. have a look at that. Yes. Well, almost a victory party. <laughs> got in a tangle on LBC during an interview about funding police recruitment. What's she gone and done? Well, they had an idea that they thought would work, which is having 10,000 more police. You know, mm -hmm. the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Normally that's what the Tories say. But this time Labour thought they'd try it, but unfortunately they got Diane out. Yes. She got the numbers wrong, didn't she? She gave an amount which would mean they were paying £30 per year per policeman. Yes. <laughs> so they said, is that right? She said, no. I didn't mean £300,000, I meant £80 million. <laughs> She hasn't grasped modern politics at all, Diane. No, I think it's mathematics. mathematics. She hasn't got. No, but you know, if you've got figures that are complete bollocks and you don't know what you're talking about, you don't trot them out on a radio show. You slap them on the side of a bus and you drive... Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm really worried that I've made too many jokes about Theresa May and not enough about Jeremy Corbyn. Mind you, you say a bad thing about Jeremy Corbyn, you get enough shit on the internet if you're not Jewish, so... Signs <laughs> <laughs> um... right. of nervousness on the seats when they go in. <laughs> 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 This is the news of the humiliating victory for <laughs> Theresa May. Not quite all of the results are in yet as we speak. The largest party is being held by students in Sheffield when Nick Clay was <laughs> After Theresa May missed the debate, the Mirror referred to the absent Prime Minister as Chicken Theresa May. You can order chicken, Theresa May, in a restaurant near me. It's thin-skinned, boneless, and refuses to be grilled. <laughs> ah, yes, this is a bozo of the Western world. <laughs> he tweeted a word. <laughs> Would you support, if, if somebody... Let me, um, is it right to hit him? <laughs> Just once. In the face. Just once. So this is the early hours of Wednesday morning. He tweeted, despite the constant negative press cafe, <laughs> and left it at that. Do you think he was trying to spell kerfuffle? No, coverage. 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 Well, coverage. This, is, this is what somebody said on Twitter. They made a sort of dictionary entry where they wrote, top definition, kerfefe 
when you want to say coverage, but your hands are too small to hit all the <laughs> Did you see what the Eurostar did? <laughs> What did we learn about Donald Trump's exercise routine this week? That he doesn't have one. That's right. He doesn't do any. No. Nope. He believes that in order to live longer, we should not do any exercise. This is good news. According <laughs> to... He met the Pope in the Vatican. Donald thought that he and the Pope got on really well because they had one thing in common. Do you know what that is? Humility. <laughs> that is right. That is, that is the answer. No! Yeah. No! You're not known to be a humble man, but I wonder... I think I am actually humble. I think I'm much more humble than you would understand. <laughs> Look at Mike Pence's face. He's <laughs> what did he just say? Just have a heart attack so I can get the job. <laughs> The five surviving ex-presidents of the USA all appeared at a fundraiser for the One America Appeal for Hurricane Relief. What led George W. Bush and Barack Obama to snigger behind Bill Clinton's back? Oh, I don't know. Journalist Simon Ricketts thinks Obama is laughing because Bush is pretending his arms are Bill Clinton's arms. Calamitous disaster, but can be a new beginning. <laughs> What is Donald Trump doing to celebrate Christmas? Is this the awful, ugly Christmas decorations? I mean, Melania thinks they're very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> I think the look is nuclear winter <laughs> ballerinas just dancing for her as she stood there i mean if it were any more freudian she'd just be in a withered chair in the corner just rocking back and forth just her face it just you know that that contractually obliged hand job is around the corner <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the best way to do when yeah. you're around the corner <laughs> She is an innocent gold digger caught up in a dangerous game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Donald Trump does frequently have trouble with names. He recently referred to the African country of Nambia, later explaining he simply mixed up the two real countries of Gambia and Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the former Prime Minister. <laughs> Depends when you're watching. Someone's coughing. <laughs> Dealing with our debts. <laughs> I know a lot of people who are probably nicer than me felt very sorry for her. But I thought it was very, very funny. <laughs> it's a bad sign when a cough sweet goes down better than you do. <laughs> What's advice did Michael Heseltine offer made regarding what she should do about Boris? Sack him. Yes, that's certainly in the territory, but we, we actually have a clip of this. Okay. Let, let's enjoy some brave clothing choices. <laughs> where would you put Boris? If you were in Theresa May's position and you were going to reshuffle, where would you put Boris Johnson? Mongolia. <laughs> they don't make patricians like that anymore. <laughs> he matches his plant in that clip. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Yes. This is not his first rodeo. <laughs> she can't sack Boris. Why? Because if, if she sacks him, he gets to walk away from Brexit while simultaneously being able to claim that if he'd stayed in the government, it all would have gone much better than it's clearly yeah. going to go. You know, she can't allow him the pleasure. It's like, you know, he's essentially an arsonist who wants to come back dressed as a fireman. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, where's the fire? <laughs> 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 Theresa May's premiership has been under threat for a while, but this must be the first time that the coffin itself could be the final nail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hummus. Yes, it's a hummus shortage. That's the empty shelves as a man... Unbelievably, no humus, no hummus. Um, <laughs> yes, there's been a huge drought of hummus. It's run out. Um, the man that produces it, humus, has said that... Uh, <laughs> it's not missing. Those of us in the Liberal Metropolitan Elite, this is more of a disaster even than Brexit. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, so you're quite right. Um, why have Sainsbury's, Tesco's and Marks and Sparks withdrawn from, this, from their shelves? People have complained it's tasted funny, metallic taste to it. It's, it's and fizzy. And fizzy. Fizzy, yes, yeah. fizzy. What else have shoppers reacted to in amazement? Oh, blue ribbons. Not going to be made. Is that the one? The job's going at blue ribbons? The jobs are moving. Moving. Yeah, yeah. so Nestle has said... To a different country, I think. They're, yeah, they're going to move 300 uh, biscuit-making jobs from Britain to Poland, and social media was set alight by people Good. baffled and upset that a biscuit they'd always thought was called Blue Ribbon is called Blue Ribband. Why did people think it was called Blue Ribbon? I have no idea, because it's been called that <laughs> since 1936. It has. <laughs> and consumers were so deeply traumatized, <laughs> they went online to vent their oh, horror. Yeah, of yeah. course they did. Becca wrote, I've been lied to all my life. <laughs> But in other food-related news, Worcester Cathedral has been criticised for blessing a bundle of asparagus accompanied by St. George and Gus, as in asparagus, oh, no. who has been a fixture of the asparagus festival in Worcester yeah. since 2008. He's actually the fifth person to wear the asparagus costume. The first four were strangled by a big blue elastic band. <laughs> Delta facing rock star who pays too much tax, according to him. Lewis Hamilton. I can't remember which one's the good one. It's either avoidance or evasion. I'm not, it's a very <laughs> subtle difference, isn't it? You'll get sued if you say the wrong one. Oh, right. So go on. <laughs> I'll mention your name as I'm passing through the, uh, the legal system. You're talking about millions and billions. And, you know, in the case of Lewis Hamilton, who is, who is extremely wealthy, isn't he meant to be the richest sportsman of all now? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, he doesn't have to be particularly fit at doing what he does. <laughs> and he sits in the car and points it in that direction. He doesn't even He's like an Uber car. driver who yeah. goes a bit quicker, that's all. <laughs> Hello. It's the, the leak of the Paradise Papers. Yes, yes. Other famous individuals are named, not just Lewis Hamilton. What's Bono done? Oh, he bought a shopping centre? He bought a shopping centre in beautiful Lithuania. Here it is. Via a holding company in Malta. I've actually been there. I, I spent, <laughs> what, to that shopping centre? Yes, I spent ages trying to shop, but I still couldn't find what I was looking for. <laughs> The way that photograph is framed is a bit unusual because you can't see the edge, do you see? He issued a statement, what did that say? Fuck the lot of you. It's the House of Commons, Sixminster. <laughs> oh no, that's the House of Commons. And he's off, the former Defence Secretary. But where are the Lib Dems? I mean, that's what I want to know in this sex scandal. Normally they are way in the front in any sex scandal and they've been left trailing. Well, there's not enough of them anymore. They can't even... <laughs> they can't even round up a decent gang of sex offenders. <laughs> a threesome would be a push, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be a push. The Times published a redacted version uh, of the list, a damning indictment of MPs' behaviour, or, if you prefer, a fun-packed missing words round. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's one, for example. A minister likes to have intercourse with men who are wearing women's what? Clothing, presumably. Women's, women's suffrage banners. Yes, well, that's... <laughs> Okay, try the next one. Tory MP takes his what to the cinema? Home sweets. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's just sensible. It's personal trainer. Yes, yeah, some of this is not high-level crime, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But yes. okay, if I can just say, as the only representative yes. of the female gender here today, I, I know it's not high-level, but it doesn't have to be high-level for women to feel under siege in somewhere like the House of Commons. And actually for women, if you're constantly being harassed, even in a small way, that... that a year ago, Paul Merton <laughs> made this joke. Uh, <laughs> Amber Rudd marry somebody called Green, and she'd be like a traffic light, wouldn't she be? Amber Rudd Green. <laughs> <laughs> it just occurred to me, that's all. <laughs> and then, eight months later, Labour's Alan Johnson said this. Am I the only one who thinks Amber Rudd sounds like a traffic light sequence? So... 
<laughs> Since he stood for the Green Party behind by Rod's Green. <laughs> <laughs> I said that on the program about eight months ago. <laughs> but it turns out the gag's even older than that, because really? some here is some footage from series one. <laughs> Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> this is the sex scandal in Gelfling, Westminster. According to the redacted dossier, a video exists of three males urinating on a Tory MP. Why are these jobs never advertised? <laughs> This is the Queen and Prince Philip showing why they get on so well together. It's their 70th wedding anniversary, I think, 1947. Well, according to the royal biographer Ingrid Seward, the secret to their happy marriage is that they laugh together. Uh, what do you think they might laugh about? Us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ingrid said the Queen is a wonderful mimic yes. and is particularly good at a Liverpudlian <gasps> accent. No. Fingers on the buzzers, teams, yeah. for the no expense spent Phil and Liz quiz. The royal couple received 2,583 wedding presents, but what do they get 76 of? Toasters. Nope. 76 people gave them handkerchiefs. Hey, Phil, look at all these hankies we got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ingrid also revealed the couple share a bedroom, but Prince Philip also has his own in case he's had a late night or he's been out with the boys. <laughs> I enjoyed his answer to a question in 1988. He was asked what he would like to be reincarnated as. He said, in the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus to contribute something to solving overpopulation. Pole dancing. Yes. It's not in any way sexual, as this picture proves. <laughs> It is a proper accredited sport, requiring gymnastic ability and a beard. And it's going to be an Olympic sport. It's an Olympic sport. Is it going to be an yep. Olympic sport? I think sport? it's going to they're talking about being an Olympic sport. Would you like to see some competitive pole dancing? Yes, I think we're being unnecessary. Not in this programme, I just said, do you want to come and see? <laughs> <laughs> In the USA, what yes. were pole dancers called when they performed in traveling fairs in the 1920s? Pole dancers. <laughs> <laughs> what international competition did the UK score a surprise victory over France this week? A wine tasting. Yes. Out of 24 countries, France came 11th, mm -hmm. nine places below the UK, which was second. Was it done on volume? Uh, <laughs> 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 this is the news that pole dancing may become an Olympic event. If it does, it'll be the first ever instance of bringing a sport into repute. <laughs> this is wildlife documentary. Uh, this is iguana running away from snakes. And uh, it was a very uh, brilliantly uh, photographed bit of footage. And you've got to spend hours, months, weekends, days, forever trying to get this stuff. And somebody complained because there's a, there's a cutaway to another iguana, uh, a, a sort of close-up thing, and they said, oh, this is cheating somehow, as if you can make an iguana. Oh, sorry, love, we missed that. Can we do it again? <laughs> so, um, so I don't understand why people are confused about how films are made. How could they it, tell it wasn't the same iguana? Well, because, I don't know, maybe it had a hat on or something. I don't know. <laughs> Up the gunners. I don't know, he had a bag. I don't know. Is it, is it true? Arsene Wenger's leaving. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it was, it was a protest registered by the snakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because they're shown in this film to be incompetent. Very poor life. There are hundreds of them yes. chasing one baby iguana, and yeah. they're so useless they don't get anywhere yeah. near him. Yeah. Um, and the iguana escapes, and I think they protested, saying the footage is completely faked. We won the encounter. <laughs> um, and David Attenborough really should just resign. 
<laughs> Can we see the footage? It's so good. You want to see the, the fakery round to do the yeah. scene with involving the... Uh... Uh, uh, went viral this week. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> What does he want from us? <laughs> Why did the statue end up looking so unlike the ferocious beast it was supposed to resemble? Um, they couldn't get the head they wanted. Well, the spokesman said it was because the artist was not that good. <laughs> Um, a nude statue of Archimedes is said to be distracting drivers on a road in Basingstoke. So uh, let's settle this once and for all. Do, do you find this distracting? Sure. No, not really. I mean, I didn't even know he was from Basingstoke. <laughs> So they are all the subject of a controversial statue, apart from Millicent Fawcett. The offending naked statue of Archimedes is outside the owner's house. I'm told it's a large, impressive semi, but don't know much about the house. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round. We start with, what has gone missing with no sightings for more than eight months? Look, this monster. Hope. <laughs> Was the Loch Ness Monster? If you believe this story, you really should take a long, hard look in the mirror, as they're the only paper that bothered to cover it. <laughs> Next, what turns out to be really big courgette? Bulge in lie detecting underpants. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Eamon Holmes? <laughs> Prince Song. Really big courgette. <laughs> <laughs> Second World War bomb turns oh. out to be really big courgette. Well, the Germans were desperate to the end, weren't they? <laughs> Here's the courgette. Oh my. It was found in a garden in Breton in Germany. According to the BBC, once police had confirmed it was just a five kilo vegetable, the pensioner disposed of the courgette himself. And sure enough, 24 hours later, neighbours heard a massive explosion. <laughs> Next, Pope Francis to what? For the first time in Vatican history. Not Is it shaking. marry a supermodel? <laughs> Admit it's all a bit far-fetched. <laughs> the answer is Pope Francis to appear in a feature film, which will premiere at the Cannes Film Festival next week. The pontiff's acting was praised, but he did annoy the director a bit when he started his scene by saying, let there be lights, camera. <laughs> <laughs> Irish nun and policeman go viral after what? Meeting Scotsman in pub for a joke. <laughs> um, football. It is a football keepy uppy oh. contest. Oh. Let's have a look. Congratulations. She's good. She's very good on the cross. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, UK's most married man says what will help him find wife number nine? Wife number eight. <laughs> Standard. <laughs> it says impressions of Norman wisdom will help him find wife number nine. <laughs> this is Ron Shepherd looking for wife number nine. He's previously been married to Margaret, Jeanette, Leslie, Kathy, Sue, Usha, Wan, and Weng. I think we can pinpoint the moment when he discovered the internet. <laughs> Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. I still can't find Keith, but I've left him another note. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Weinstein's office staff. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's the one to finish the show on. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with news that in Brussels, as world leaders gather for a photo opportunity, Theresa May insists that the UK and United States still have a special relationship. <laughs> in the basement of Labour Party HQ, the BBC's Laura Koonsberg recovers from the knockout drops to be met with a worrying sight. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And at Calais, the British unveil the winning design for a post-Brexit entrance to the Channel Tunnel. <laughs> 